Hi, this week I want to talk to you about the uh, latest blog that I've written, History Silo Effect. Um, it's not a new concept, but it's one that I think is useful for us to revisit from time to time. With the recent um, things going on in the press, uh, or so recent, over the last few years, with things like Brexit, with things like the American presidential elections, we've seen um, this concept, this idea that we are operating we, in, well, online, and we all, always have been in, um, in our real life, if you like, um, in a echo chamber. So this term echo chamber has sort of turned up. And, uh, and that's where we are hearing the same opinions back. So we, we, we operate in circles of like-minded, like-thinking people which means that we are not so open to outside views. Um, even those of us who think we probably are quite open-minded find ourselves um, that, we're being, that, that we're agreeing with the people we're seeing online, that they're agreeing with us, and it's because we've kind of built uh, subconsciously this echo chamber. Now, I think we can apply that to history as well. And there's already something going on in history teaching and our, our own history learning which before the echo chamber effect has an impact and that is that history is absolutely everything that's happened before this moment that I'm talking to you now and so that's huge you have to be able to carve it up to be able to teach it to be able to talk about it and we can think about that in terms of uh, chronology, so actual time periods, but what about disciplines, what about um, society levels, what about geographical locations? And we all have our own interests and the, the, the way that obviously works is that we go and we find material that is about that interest. But does that mean that we are operating in our own silos, our own history echo chambers? So. Do you know, if you're a Tudor fan, for instance, do you know what else was going on in the world at Tudor times? Do you know what was the contemporary uh, goings on in China? You know, possibly you know a little bit about Europe because it was intertwined with some of the history of the Tudors. But, um, and also, uh, if you take an interest in the kings and queens, what was going on in the lower society levels? What was going on in the middle class levels? What was going on in the boroughs? You know, London now is a very different place to um, most of the rest of the UK. So if we're focusing on what's going on in London, what was going on in the rest of the country? So I have a little challenge for you and for me to go and read something totally outside of, or maybe not totally, outside of what you would normally read. So say you're interested in the Tudors, for instance, go and have a look what was going on in, in other parts of the world at that time, or if you're always a Kings and Queens person, go and find out what was going on in, in other elements of society at the time. So as part of my expansion of knowledge, I, uh, I've read this book by Adam Rutherford, A Brief History of Everyone Who Ever Lived, and it's because I was looking into um, my genealogy a bit, my actual DNA uh, results, which you can you can all get relatively cheaply now, spit in a tube and it tells you where you're from, which I'll share the uh, results of you another time on that. They're quite hilarious. Um, but this is this this is very good if you're interested in genealogy, but it, it, it expanded my knowledge um, and there's relevance here to when we're talking about royal family trees, for instance. Um, my next port of call is I want to learn more about the climate of, uh, of England in certain uh, periods of time and how that might have affected the population and the way they acted. So I'd love to know what you are going to do, um, where you're going to go next with your, uh, your learning and I hope you found that interesting and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.